The Klipsch Reference Premier 600M is one of the most popular loudspeakers Klipsch has made in recent memory. It's also the one speaker we have never given a proper review. Well, that changes today because we've got the 600M V2. Yes, the brand new updated model and we need to talk. Before we jump into the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. A little over a year ago, I was at my wit's end about what to do with my thinning hair. I worried that Father Time had finally caught up with me and that my hair would eventually thin until there was just nothing left. Thankfully, that's when I discovered Keeps. With Keeps' subscription-based service, I was able to get doctor-recommended hair care treatment sent right to my door so that it didn't have to become another statistic. Thankfully, it wasn't too late for me, and I got the care I needed for my thinning hair without having to leave my home, visit a doctor, or even go to a pharmacy thanks to Keeps. After more than a year, I think the results speak for themselves, and I'm not alone. I'm so glad I found a plan that worked for me to reverse my thinning hair and even stimulate new hair growth, and I believe that you can too. Hair loss stops with Keeps. Try it for yourself. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson or click the link in the description. That is keeps.com slash Andrew Robinson. Thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring this video, and now back to it. At first glance, at least from the front, I doubt many would notice a difference between the original 600M and the 600M V2. The speaker is still a two-way rear-ported design featuring a 1-inch vented titanium tweeter made it to a 6.5-inch mid-range driver. However, with version 2, the tweeter sits inside a new, larger silicon track tricks horn waveguide for greater dispersion. The ceramic woofers also get an upgrade in the form of larger diameter voice coils and aluminum shorting rings, which, according to Klipsch, give the speaker better linearity throughout the bass, decrease distortion while upping power handling, resulting in improved speed and accuracy. These changes, along with the rear-facing track tricks port, give the new 600M a reported frequency response of 44 hertz to 25 kilohertz, which is unchanged from the previous model. The new 600M has an in-room sensitivity of 94.5 dB, which is a decrease compared to the original's reported sensitivity of 96, though impedance is unchanged at 8 ohms, meaning that like its predecessor, the new 600M isn't going to be difficult to drive. While the new 600M may look similar to the old, it's easy to see how the two differ, especially when you turn your attention around back. The V2's cabinet has better bracing, and thanks in part to its redesigned chamfer and its larger horn waveguide, the new 600 looks just a little bit more tailored. Around back, the new speaker is a clear departure from the original, sporting an all-new binding post design and crossover plate that elevates the 600M to proper reference premier status. The binding posts are the same that you're going to find on Klipsch's costlier heritage speakers like our Heresy 4. Sadly, the speaker's finish options did not receive an upgrade over the outgoing model, leaving customers with the same ebony or walnut wraps, which, in my opinion, is a missed opportunity. Now we've had these speakers for a while, so we've been able to pair them with a wide range of electronics. Like I said earlier, the new 600Ms are not difficult to drive, though they do get better as you upgrade your associated equipment. Just don't expect night and day changes as you move up market. You can expect more subtle refinements to what is an already solid sounding speaker. We tested the 600Ms with our AudioLab 6000A Play, the Marantz Model 40N, the Deckwear Zenamp, as well as the Blue Sound Node acting as a preamp connected to one of my Crown XLS DriveCore 2 amplifiers, all of which sounded excellent, though with the Crown amp I did have to turn the levels down about four clicks to combat tweeter hiss, but this is not the fault of the Klipsch. Now for home theater duties, we incorporated the older RP600C center speaker and Klipsch in-ceiling speakers using the Onkyo 7100 as well as the new Marantz SR8015, both of which did an exceptional job and sounded great with the new 600M. I preferred the sound and flexibility of the SR8015 with the 600Ms to most everything we tried, though if I was going for just absolute sound quality and nothing else. The Deckware Zen amp sounded the best overall, so long as I didn't attempt to hit peaks in excess of about 85 dB in our larger room. While I've spent considerable time with the original RP600M speakers, they never saw an official review here because, well, by the time we got them, there was always a new speaker from Klipsch that bumped them from our schedule. 
Nothing against the 600M. In fact, I mostly agreed with the reviews that were out there with respect to its performance. And to be perfectly honest, I expected the new V2 to be more of the same. I mean, after all, they're not that different on paper. I was wrong. Now, one of the things that Klipsch doesn't share with you is the fact that the crossover tuning has been tweaked with version 2. So along with the subtle changes in the speaker's physical design, it all adds up to a decidedly different sound signature for this speaker, if not the brand. One of my initial comments to Christy when listening to the new model was that it just, it reminded me of how I felt going from the Heresy 3s to the 4s and how the new speaker sounded oh so much more refined than the outgoing model, despite there being seemingly few changes. Now, I would never classify any Klipsch loudspeaker as neutral or linear. They, they have a sound, one that historically has resulted in some bass accentuation mixed with a scooped out mid-range and boosted treble, at least around where the mid-range and treble cross over with one another. This results in a response that is more smile-like, a, a sound that is dynamic, captivating, dare I say, live, which a lot of folks prefer. Can it be too much of a good thing at times? Sure. But it can also be damn good fun, which is no doubt why Klipsch and many of their product lines, the reference Premiere in particular, have been so popular. While the new 600M doesn't completely do away with these traits, it does have a more refined sound that is keeping in the recent tradition of Klipsch becoming more mature. Some may even say, more respectable. The new 600M sounds far more linear than any clip speaker we have tested to date. I could still hear a mild rise in the bass around 40 or 50 hertz or so, though I doubt many listeners will mind because it gives a fuller sound down low, and in some smaller to medium spaces, this may negate the need for you to budget for a subwoofer. This being a rear ported speaker, placement is obviously key. You can boost the bass even further by parking the speaker just a little bit closer to your front wall, or you can lessen it by pulling it out into your room. Nevertheless, there is a mild rise in the speaker's lower octaves that helps the bass to just sound a little bit deeper, not to mention just downright larger than you may expect from a bookshelf like this to sound. But even with this slight boost in the lower octaves, the resulting bass was more articulate than expected, possessing terrific speed and detail that blended well with the designer's sprinkling of manipulated weight. Now, when it comes to the mid-range, that all-too-important part of the speaker's frequency response, resting between, say, 200 hertz and 4,000 kilohertz, the new 600M is at its most linear. With vocals, clip speakers have always had an immediacy to them, though at times, that immediacy was born out of a forwardness that some could find objectionable. That's all but gone here. The new 600M is very easy to listen to for long periods of time, and while it still has a presence, a speed, and transparency to the artist or instrument, at least with respect to the mid-range, it's not as forward-sounding as past designs. Sure, there is still some subtle, emphasis on subtle, manipulation happening, especially as you approach the highs, which gives certain instruments and vocal ranges a little bit of a kick, which I like, but nothing nearly as noticeable, or should I say, as egregious as past designs. In truth, when listening to rock Robin, Nora Jones, or even Collective Soul, there was very little difference in tone with respect to the mids between the new 600M and a costlier Revel bookshelf, which is something I never thought I would say. And it's much the same story for the Tweeter, where the new 600M proved to be surprisingly flat. But best of all, not the least bit fatiguing. While the speaker's Tweeter may be titanium, it doesn't ring or have that metallic sheen to its highs that you get with the 600 Anniversary series from Bowers & Wilkins. The version 2's highs are airy and extended, but they simply do not shout at you, nor do they become sharp at high volumes the way some metal dome tweeters can. If anything, at the absolute extremes, think anything above 14 kilohertz or so, they're more reserved or rolled off, trading the potential for shrill and fatiguing for breathy. While this speaker hits the highest of highs, it doesn't do so with the same energy as the Sonus Faber Lumina 2's or even the Monitor Audio Silver's, meaning, of all three, the Klipsch pairs a little bit better across a wider range of music genres, which is something I don't believe that I have ever said about a Klipsch speaker. 
The V2 soundstage gets another upgrade over the older 600M. There is just terrific dispersion left to right and top to bottom. Seriously, this speaker is pretty great off axis, which includes vertically as well. There is very little, if any, change in tone or timbre when seated versus standing. So those of you with stadium-like seating in your home theaters, you definitely want to take note. Center imaging, terrific, though I achieved slightly better focus with some subtle toe-in. Detail throughout is excellent, as is the new 600Ms have zero issues orally disappearing within your room. Dynamically, the new 600M delivers. This is a clip speaker after all. These speakers pack an absolute punch, and when crossed over with a sub around 60 hertz or so, I doubt many listeners will be left with much to complain about. Hell, I doubt many would even need towers, but... I digress. But the 600M is more than just a blunt instrument. Its dynamics, especially when listening to piano tracks from the likes of Alexis French, can possess a delicacy I simply just wasn't prepared for. Moreover, the 600M remains musical and engaging at lower volume, so those of you with smaller spaces or shared walls will really appreciate this. Jumping over to home theater, I loved the new 600Ms for movies. They absolutely anchor a surround sound system and feel completely cinematic. We weren't able to get the new RP600C V2, so we relied on the older 600 Center. While I could hear a subtle difference in tone and presence between the new 600M V2s and the old 600C, with the Center sounding just a little bit more forward and directional in comparison, the difference wasn't that jarring. If you use auto room correction like Odyssey or Dirac, the difference will be even less noticeable. So my advice is this. If you have existing reference premier speakers and are itching to try the new models, start with the left and right mains and perhaps the center speaker first. What I wouldn't do is throw out all of your older RP speakers for newer models because when it comes to surround or overhead channels, I doubt that you're going to benefit that much. But the answer I know that you're waiting for is which model is better? While I would not call the differences between the two night and day, that does not change my opinion that the new 600Ms are better, and the ones that I would buy right now if given the choice. But does that mean that you need to rush out and upgrade your old 600Ms or that you made a mistake buying the older model? No, I, I don't think so, especially if you're happy with them, because both of these speakers are solid. Moving on to other comparisons, starting with the more expensive Revel Concerta M16 bookshelf speaker. These two are actually pretty neck and neck. Where the Klipsch exhibits a bit more low end energy, the Revel makes up with just a bit more top end extension. Dare I say forwardness? I know, right? But all in all, the two are way more evenly matched than I think diehard Revel or even Harman fans would expect. I could be happy with either as a personal reference for well under a grand, though given that my in-ceiling speakers are also from Klipsch, I would likely side with the 600M V2 if for just no other reason than to keep it all in the family. The new 600M V2 costs the same as Polk's stellar R200, and between the two, this is another toss-up for me. The Klipsch is easier to drive, more dynamic, and has a marginally broader soundstage and dispersion. That said, the R200 is even more composed and neutral compared to the improved 600M V2. So, if you value accuracy and neutrality, the R200 is still my go-to at this price point. Just know that you may have to invest in a few more watts to achieve best results if you go with the Polks. The new 600M falls between the Monitor Audio Bronze 100s and the Silver 100s in terms of price. You know I love Monitor Audio, but the new Klipsch is a bit better in terms of overall refinement compared to the Bronze 100, though it cannot compete in the looks and build department when compared to the Silver. But if looks don't matter to you, the 600M is the better overall valued compared to either Monitor Audio speaker. As for the Wharfdale Evo 4.1, while the Evo is better constructed, not to mention nicer looking, its lack of a rear-facing port means it should be a better fit for those of you who may be tight on space. I love the 4.1, though admittedly not every song or film is going to gel with that AMT tweeter as good as it is, which is why, despite preferring the look of the Evos, I'd side with the 600M. I gotta say, the new Reference Premier 600M version 2 from Klipsch, it's just another example for me of how this rock and roll brand continues to evolve and just hone their products little by little, taking them from being good for the money, piss off your neighbors kind of speakers, you know, you know the vibe, to serious hi-fi contenders. The new 600M V2 is 100% capable of reference grade sound quality. It doesn't take much to hear it for yourself. So while it's not an entirely new speaker, 
the subtle changes add up to make a difference. This is just a great speaker, one that can run with the big boys. And if I'm keeping it at 100, the vast majority of you, it, it's high end enough to be a forever choice. So that's it. That is now my review of the brand new Klipsch 600M V2. But now I'm curious what Christy thought of it. These really surprised me. Yeah. Well, I did not like the original 600Ms. Yeah, that was weird to me. Uh, yeah, it was weird to me. I mean, I think pretty, I'm pretty sure today, like those, the original 600M were like the only clip speaker that I've ever heard and not either immediately liked mm -hmm. or just downright disliked them. Yeah, and, it's weird. Yeah, and I never really, I, I think it had a lot to do with the bass um, performance of the original speakers. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I didn't, I didn't like them. So I was fine that we didn't do, actually do that particular review. Mm -hmm. Um, but for me, these are way better. I mean, I really like them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think they're absolutely fantastic in a home theater setup. Yeah. Like when we were watching that movie ambulance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we've also been watching this new spy drama. Well, it's not new. It's new to, new to me. New, new to, to us. You. Season uh, two just came out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, it's called Tehran. Yep. It's actually really good. Anyway, watching those movies or mm -hmm. the TV show was so much fun with these speakers. Mm -hmm. Talk about huge, huge sound. And you kind of alluded to, or like in a wink that you, you know, maybe you didn't need the tower version. Yeah. Yeah. And I would a hundred percent agree with that. Like I think, Especially because we have a huge, huge room here. Yeah. And I thought the bookshelf speakers were more than enough. Yeah, especially with a sub. It's, yeah. With especially a, with a sub. Uh, definitely. Totally. So if you have a, a room that's not as big as this one, which I would go on a, out on a limb to say that most people probably don't, mm -hmm. I would start with the bookshelves. Uh, I have a question for you. Um, with respect to all of the comparisons that we made, I know, especially in the last couple of days, you've been pretty hot on the back and forth between these and the Revels, which shocked me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, as far as which one I like better, is that yeah. what you're asking? Well, A, knowing how much you kind of like a more dynamic smile-like curve of a loudspeaker, which is what Klipsch historically has always delivered— when I bought the Revels, I kind of figured like this was going to be more of a a battle f between you and I, and it's turning out to be a battle between Klipsch and Revel. Yeah, I am still very, very much on the fence mm -hmm. as far as which I like better. Hmm. Um, I'm honestly leaning towards the Revels. Okay. Only because the 600 M's have a little bit more low end to them. Yes. And I get it. That is going to be something that a lot of people really like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But for as a personal preference for me, if you watched any of what I've ever had to say, this should not be a huge surprise for you. But mm -hmm. um, because of the type of speakers I tend to gravitate towards mm -hmm. and because the Revels have a little less weight to them. Yeah, very, very slight. But it is. Yeah, there is a little bit less. Yes. I, I, I'm like a hair just a hair over towards the Revel side, mm -hmm. which, yeah, just being in this new space, a lot of things I feel like I've known or responded to in the past are not translating as much in this new room. Hmm. So. So you're, you're leaning, you're, you're thinking you're leaning more towards Revel, but you were not anticipating the matchup to be. They're as, so close. They are. They are. I mean, listen, I wasn't prepared for them to be this close, but I didn't know anything about Revel before we started other than what you've ever said. Right. So, um, yeah, they, I think just based on the things that you've told me, mm -hmm. people that are experienced with, with Revel speakers as well as clip speakers, you will likely be very, very surprised to hear how similar they are in yeah. sound. Um, so I think it's just going to become probably, very much a an issue of like, well, I'm just I've always been a Klipsch fan, or I've always been a a, a Revel fan. Like mm -hmm. those sort of ties and um, alliances are very difficult to break. Yeah, yeah. But I think that no matter which side of the fence you're on, you should give either an a, a new look. Yeah, I would agree with that. 
Uh, but overall, I am really, really impressed by the new clip speakers. But yeah, give me something. Give me some new, some new wood or finish options. Yeah. That's, that would be my biggest or my next ask. Yeah. I think at this point, clips really just button up the finish, tidy it up. And that alone, I think, would put them in the conversation with a lot of other brands that maybe people don't associate. And you don't realize that visually that is the thing that's like the hang up. Um, yeah, I agree. I, every generation, Heritage, Reference Premier, every generation, as the years have gone by with them, this, what they're doing is showing, well, you may think it's not an improvement, but for me, it's like we're just honing. We're getting closer to, I don't want to say perfect because there's no such thing. But yeah, yeah, it's it's an impressive, impressive speaker. I guess my only question that I have for you or in, mm. in the rest of the audience mm -hmm. Do you think that the direction that Klipsch is headed will make them more acceptable to the tr the people that I think consider themselves to be like true audiophiles? To the audiophile community. But here's the thing about Klipsch that I, that I will say is that if you fall into that camp, right? If you fall into this, this camp of pre and post, there are still plenty of models out there because Klipsch has been so prolific over the years that you can have that old school experience if that's what you want. Um, but for people coming up, I think they're going to find this marginally refined new Klipsch to be easier going with a wider range of not only electronics, but music and movie genres. I think you're going to find that the speakers become easier to live with in terms of placement. Um, because certain bumps and valleys and stuff, they've all just kind of been leveled out. And I can already hear the, the Harmon fanboys going, see, it's all about being neutral. And it's like, we get it. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think, I think what Klipsch is doing is smart. Even if it is kind of in the face of their, their branding, their branding up into this point, I think what they're doing is smart because it is going to make the products a little bit more accessible for a wider audience by taking some of the overt personality out. It's still there. You're, oh, I mean, yeah. it's still there, but they still, they still sound yeah. like Klipsch yeah. and big and bold and in, kind of in your face, just, you know, not it's just less. So yeah, I, that's what I think. I think you're going to have different factions of Klipsch fans, but they'll still be Klipsch fans. I think people that may have never considered Klipsch will maybe now consider them. If they can put their biases aside. If they aside. can put their biases aside. And I think if they do that, I would not be shocked if people who are very much in, say, Harmon, Revel territory, Bowers and Wilkins, well-known brand that has that higher-end pedigree, if they don't look at something like the 600 MV2 and go, huh, well, I'll be damned. Mm -hmm. Because... I think I did that several times throughout this review every time we would compare it to a costlier product and go, huh, I'll be damned. Well, and that's why I keep saying that I feel like the the, the last little piece that's missing for me mm -hmm. is the finish option. Yeah. And just giving giving people a little bit more than the kind of the same old, same old. Go with a different material. I or mean, go with something totally yeah, different. Yeah, go with a go with a leatherette, like a leatherette vinyl wrap. I mean, you're rock and roll. Make this thing look like a dark black biker jacket, you know, yeah. with that leather. Because this stuff, this speaker will hang with a Sonus Faber. It will. It will. Just not in the looks department. All right, so that is now our review of the new Klipsch 600M V2 bookshelf loudspeaker. But now it's time for you guys to tell us what you thought. Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you, it's kind of a spin on what Christy already asked me. And that is, what do you guys think of Klipsch's recent approach to more linear voicing? Do you think this is going to make the haters slow their roll or is it actually going to maybe anger diehard Klipsch fans? 
I'm curious. So let's get the conversation going. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, speaking of thanks, I would like to thank this video's sponsor, Keeps. Remember to save 50% off your first order. Go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson. Uh, and thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Um, Oh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.